Salut survivors, welcome back to Solid Rockcast channel in Mountain Blade Bannerlord Guide series. Are you new in Bannerlord? Or you are maybe a returning player? You are at the right place. Since in this video guide, I will cover what I define as a good starting tips. You will learn the basics on how to set up properly your party and your clan. And with the right foundations, you will be able to shoot for the stars. First, I will explain the key aspects and goals you should target during the initial game phase. Second, I will address several early game tips on how to set up your economy day one onwards. And finally, I will share several general tips and tricks. Please share, like and subscribe for more Mountain Blade Banner Lord videos. Now, let's go straight to the video. Part 1. Initial Game Phase During the initial game phase, you will start weak and poor, of course. The main goals of this first phase are therefore to establish your initial party strengths, to develop your initial skills, and to grow your cash, your capital, your dinars. <laughs> All these are intricately linked to each other to some extent, but you can break it down into clear goals. For your initial party strengths, to be able to fend off bandits, unlock some quests, and grow to the minimum critical size where you can afford to lose units, you need to target to have a decent party size of around 30 troops minimum. Easy cheap goal is to target 2 thirds melee and 1 third range. For your initial skills, this will vary based on your companion party members and grand goals. But there are some always good minimum starting skills, such as steward, riding, athletics, trade, to name a few. One important thing is to know that you will only earn one attribute point every four levels earned, while you will have one focus point for every level earned. Another important aspect is for you to define loosely for each of these key skills what levels you need to achieve for your short-term goals. For example, level 50 in trade to get better in spotting good deals, level 25 in steward to pay lower wages, and so on. But I will not cover in this video the hundreds of skills levels and what you can unlock. Now that we have covered these initial goals, we will go through these first days and weeks and how to achieve these in more detail. Part 2. Economy Day 1 onwards. Initial cash. When you appear first in Calradia, you will need some cash rapidly. There are some very initial tips to do on day 1. Tip number 1. When you reach a first city, you can sell your civilian clothing. Sure, you will be naked when walking in town or in the tavern, but there is no negative consequence to your character in being naked. Yet, as a result, this will have provided you with a few hundred denards. Not bad of a trade-off, if you ask me. Tip number two. In the starting cities, this is likely you can find animals for somewhat low prices, say 40 to 50 for hogs or 60 to 70 for sheep. Buy these, slaughter them, earn hides and meat, which you can in turn sell for an overall instant profit, making again a few hundred denards right away. Tip number three is to go to the tavern and play the tabloot game. You can gamble up to 500 denards and earn that much when you win. You might need to practice a little bit, but you can easily learn to play as defenders and you can win almost every time this tabloid game in Empire Taverns. I could make another video on this if you think it would be useful to you. Let me know in the comments. Now these tips 2 and 3, the butcher and the tabloid game, can likely be repeated in several cities in your first days and keep bringing cash in for investment into trade. One point to note though is about the tip number 2 the butchering technique. You need to be careful not to acquire and then move around with these animals because you will be slower on the campaign map and this is very risky business during your first few days. So you need to buy them, slaughter them, sell the hides and the meat. 
in the same city. Party speed, carrying capacity, and herd penalty. Now you will have some cash in hands, so you can invest into products in some cities and sell these in other cities for a profit. But you will have a new challenge, encumbrance and party speed. For you to solve your encumbrance and increase your carrying capacity, you need to buy pack animals such as mules. You can then see your carrying capacity increasing when your animal's pack size grows. For you to increase your party speed on the map, which is critical for not being caught by bandits or to catch them when you want to do so, you will need to buy horses. I recommend increasing the size of the bottom right menu so that you can constantly see what your party speed is and when hovering obtain details on these parameters. Possibly you are having a herd penalty or you are having a footman on horses bonuses. Regularly pay attention to it. This can have high impact in numerous situations. Also to be noted is that if you will have for example 20 foot troops, there will be no advantage of having more than 20 horses and you will likely be able to have a bit less than 20 pack animals. Therefore, in order for you to increase your carrying capacity, it will mean to have more horses and therefore a bigger size of your party overall. You need to grow these ratios in the first weeks in the game up to a stable point. This is where your initial trade income should be invested into, so that you can trade even better moving forward. So all in all, you will have slaughtered so many hogs and sheep and won so many tableau games to buy horses and mules. Limit your daily costs. Every day, you pay wages for your soldiers. Therefore, you must be managing your daily running cost of your party troops so that it does not become a burden. For example, tier 2 standard troops costs 3 dinners per day tier 3, 5 dinners per day, tier 4, 8 dinners per day, and so on and so forth. Therefore, I would highly recommend limiting yourself to tier 3 maximum early on, so that you control your daily cash expenses. This way, if you have around 30 troops at 5 dinners per day, then you will pay 150 dinars every single day on wages. For you to know more on the troops, their upgrades and so on, you can right click on a unit and this brings you to the unit tree and you can hover to see their wages. In this aspect, mercenary troops that you can hire in a tavern have higher wages and should be avoided at first. Maybe also to be noted, a small side note is that peasants are free, okay? They don't need wages. You only pay for the food. Therefore, you should not increase your party wages until you have increased your daily passive income. The grand goal of the coming trading will be to achieve to reach around 26,000 dinars for you to be able to invest into a workshop. Now the daily income of the workshop on the table, you will then be able to increase your cost of daily wages. Starting trading. Now that you have gotten your early days cash with techniques 1, 2 and 3 and that you have learned about the party speed concept and the herd malus limitations and that you are in control of your daily running costs for your party, you will be in control of your investment budget for initial trading. Trading can be considered as a vast subject, so here I will only cover basics to get you started and this can be covered in more depth in a future video dedicated to trading only. When you will reach trade skill 25, you will then see better what are the good deals for you to sell. And then, when reaching trade skill 50, the good deals to buy also. But until that time, in order to earn trade skill, you will have to do without it at first. But there is a trick. 
when you will be in a city and you will be able to access the trade menu, you will be able to hover over a product, opening a tooltip menu where you can then hover to know if the price offered is higher or lower than the average. This will give you an indication. To be noted is that during the first weeks, the economy has been reset to some extent. And therefore, the prices of some items are much higher than what they will be when the economy system will be more stabilized. So you can therefore get hold of some very good deals. I would recommend for you to select a couple of products of high added value and of relatively low weight for your initial trading. For example, jewelry, velvet, pottery, linen, and so on. Depending on where you operate your initial trading between few cities. Part 3. General tips and tricks. There are tons of tips for this game, since it is so complex with numerous layers, but I will be listing down there some that I believe are most useful and critical when you're starting with the game. Arena tournaments. There is literally nothing to lose to play an arena tournament. I would recommend for you to play every tournament you can. You will earn skill points and practice during all these tournaments. And if you have a companion, he might also be joining you there. Important note, when you play these, you are being provided with weapons. But in the case of the armor, this is really yours. So in the future, consider investing into armor to help you progress better in these tournaments. Before you know it, you will have become the superstar of the arena tournaments. Skills leveling. For you to level up your skills, it can sometimes appear a bit tricky on what do you need to do to level up medicine, what do you need to do to level up any skill. You can find that information and how it is. When you go to your character menu, for example on the steward skill, then click on this icon, then you will gain that information. For example, on the steward case, it is therefore useful to have diverse food so that your steward skill increases faster. It's not something that you would have known without looking at the tooltip. So if you want to level up athletics, well, go check out and let me know in the comments if you think it makes sense. Okay? <laughs> not always supply and demand. That's a little bit of a tricky point. Because when you buy and sell items in a city, the unit rates, the prices, will vary depending on the supply and the demand rules. So far, this is all totally normal. But then, if you go to a village, this does not work this way. The prices, the rates, stay flat. So, if you find a village with a good cheap product for sale, no need to hesitate, just buy it all. Relation levels and recruits. When you hire new recruits, at first you can only get basic recruits. In order to improve these recruitment levels later on, you need to improve your relationship with the people providing these recruits. This implies that you might want to select some area on the map where you will want to gain high level relations with some people in neighboring cities and villages for you to gain access to higher tier recruits in the future. Companions. When traveling from city to city, you can hire companions to your party when going to taverns. This is where you, do, you play the tableau naked, remember? These can be great and will become very important to your party and clan in the future, but be careful with your expenses, so select carefully your companion. You can then select if your companion should act as your party scout, steward, engineer, doctor. But at the very beginning, I would suggest for you to do all these so that your character levels up. But this is up to you. 
For you to find out what companions are available in the game and their corresponding skills, you can go to the encyclopedia, pressing N. Then go to the section Heroes and play with the filters. Once again, there is no hurry to hire numerous companions. But if you want to get a starting one, I would suggest a Wanderer type, such as uh, Bitter Row, Wanderer, The Healer, Willow Bark, and the likes, who can then learn the ropes with you early game and can one day lead a party by himself. And maybe one day you will appoint him as a castle governor. And maybe one day he will be granted the right to establish his own clan in your kingdom. But this is far ahead already. For now, you should think short term goals. Smithing. Smithing is a very, very, I repeat, very good way to earn lots of money easily in this game. I would recommend for you to give it a try if you desire to. You can either focus very much on it, or you can just invest a few focus points, since anyway you will need endurance for your riding and athletics skills. This can also provide you with smithing quests that will help you increase relationship with lords and nobles as well. Quests synergies. There are plenty of quests in the world of Calradia. Depending on your gaming tastes, some will be more enjoyable to you to do than to others maybe. You do not have to do them all, just do the ones you like. But you should consider that sometimes you can have multiple quests that have synergies from each other. For example, you could at the same time have a quest to hunt bandits. Then at the same time a quest to provide manual laborers to a nearby mine. And at the same time have a quest to supply hand weapons to a gang leader. And at the same time you could... No, it's okay, I'll stop here. You got my point. <laughs> This concludes my take on all the basic tips. Each of them could be detailed much more and will likely be the case in a future video. So do stay tuned. On that note, let's toast to the like and subscribe buttons. I appreciate very much your support. Thank you for watching and see you in my next videos. Cheers!